second part of Gold Tree, Silver Tree. We left the story with uh, Queen Silver Tree getting into her boat and heading across the ocean to where she knew Gold Tree was living alive and well with the prince. So she was in her boat. She was standing at the front like this. And the boat was sailing through the water. And the queen had a very big sail, one huge sail on her boat. And her symbol was, of course, the trout. There's this big giant, like a big leaping fish that had to leap out of the water sometimes. The trout leaping out of the water. Everybody knew when they saw that sail that that was like her boat. That was like a sign that made it her boat. And so it was that one day, <coughs> um, a gold tree was up on the cliffs looking out to sea. And what did she see coming from a distance, closer and closer? A ship. And the sail was getting bigger and bigger. And she was looking and straining really hard to see what was on the sail. And you could imagine what she saw that was the trout. She knew that silver tree knew she was alive and was coming for her. Well, she ran back to her palace. The prince wasn't there. He was off princing somewhere else, doing whatever princes do during the day. And uh, she ran to her maids and her servants and she told them, my mother's coming, it's, it's silver tree's coming, I'm in danger. And they said, your highness, we will take you to the mullioned chamber. And she said, okay, what's that? It's a mullion chamber. Well, it's a chamber mullioned. She said, yeah, okay, okay, but I don't understand the word mullioned. What is that? Ah, it is a room with no windows. The thickest walls in the castle. A door of solid steel with a lock that no one can ever pick without the key. Once inside, you are as safe as safe can be. It is a safe room. She said, well, why, why didn't you just say that? Said, because it's called the Mullion Chamber. She said, okay, we've got no time to spare. Take me to the Mullion Chamber. So they led her up the stairs and down corridors, past, past places in the castle she'd never been before, to this huge door, and they opened it. <clears throat> and she went in. And they said, we will open it again once the danger has passed. <clears throat> And she was in there, in the mullion chamber. Well, down at the seashore, a silver tree arrived. Take me to my daughter. She must be longing to see me, she said. And uh, everybody at the, down at the beach said, well, we don't think she's at home. Nonetheless, I shall come to the castle and wait for her. And so they had no choice. They took Queen Silver Tree up to the castle. And after a while, she found out from one of the servants who told that Gold Tree was in the mullioned chamber. Take me to this mullioned chamber. Let me see it. We can take you, Your Majesty, but it won't help. She's locked in there and nobody here in the castle has the key. But what they'd done was, just to make sure she didn't find the key, they'd taken one of the prince's favourite hunting dogs, tied a string round its neck, tied the key on, and let it run loose from the castle. So the key was gone. They, they couldn't even get her. Surely one of you must have the key. No, Your Majesty. The, the prince is not here and uh, he has the key. They lied. Well, take me to the chamber. And they got to the chamber. Oh, gold tree, gold tree. It's your mother's silver tree. Open the door. And she shouted out, Mother, I can't open the door. I'm locked in the mullion chamber. Please go away. Yes, I will go away, but first, please. And there was like a little tiny keyhole, right? Please stick out your smallest finger through the keyhole that I may kiss it. Well, at this point, Gold Tree made a bad decision. She decided, well, what's the worst that can happen? Just sticking a finger out through the, through the hole. Seems, seems safe enough. So it was, she stuck her finger out through the hole and it came wiggling out through the hole like this. And straight away, <coughs> Silver Tree pricked it with a pin. 
and had a poison. And when the other head of the chamber, she just heard <coughs> thud, and the finger slipped back through the hole. A gold tree fell to the floor, and she turned to the servants, who hadn't really seen what happened. I'm finished here. Time to take me back down to the shoreline. I will return to my kingdom. And they were glad to hear that. They took her down. She climbed aboard her ship. She was at the front like this. And they sailed off. Oh, well, the prince was out, prancing around, as I said, on his horse. Suddenly, one of his dogs runs up. And he thought to himself, why is my dog here? I wonder what's going on. And uh, then he found the key around the neck. So he knew there was trouble back at the castle. Fast as he could, he rode for the castle. He rode across the drawbridge. He rode under the portcullis. He rode into the courtyard. He jumped from his horse and he ran with the key all the way to the mullion chamber. And he opened the mullion chamber and there lay Golden Tree on the other side. And he honestly believed that she was no longer alive. And he said, from this day on, Gold Tree, and there was a big table inside that room, Gold Tree shall lie on this table. Like this, she's lying there. No one will ever come into this room except me. And in a rage, he slammed the door behind him. He locked the door and he put the key in his pocket. And there it stayed. <clears throat> and nobody in the castle was ever allowed to mention Gold Tree. And nobody in the castle was ever allowed to go into that room. And years passed, many years passed. And after a while, the prince decided that, well, he was still young and he was going to marry again. And he met another princess. And that princess came to the castle and she was living there for a while in another part of the castle with him um, so they could get to know each other. And to be honest, she wasn't really sure if she wanted to marry him, but she was kind of being pushed into it by her parents. And um, the wedding was getting closer and closer and closer. And after a while, she said, I've seen the whole castle, um, Prince, but what's behind this this huge chamber, this mullion chamber? Don't mention the mullion chamber. And suddenly there was a darkness in his eyes, a redness in his face. And she got a little bit scared. And then he said, it's, it's fine. There's, there's nothing in the mullion chamber. You must never ask me about it or ever go in there. And so it was one day, some weeks later, when he was gone, he'd forgotten one day to take his waistcoat and in the waistcoat pocket was the key to the mullion chamber. And this was very shortly before the wedding. She went to the mullion chamber, looking around carefully. She opened the door and she went inside. There was Golden Tree lying there, beautiful as ever, on the table. And she went around her and looked at her. And she noticed sticking out of her little finger, a little pin sticking out like a little metal, like a little needle. She pulled it out. Golden tree woke up. Where, where, who are you? Where, where? I'm in the mullion. Yes, watch out my... And then she... How long have I been in here? You've been in here for years. Said the... Said the the other lady, you've been here a long time. Take me to the prince at once. The prince is out. He's out hunting. Well, when the prince came home that night, the the lady that he was in, engaged to marry came out to him and said, I have a surprise for you. And he said, there can be no good surprises for me. I can give you something that will make you so happy. He said, nothing would make me happy. And she said, I think this will. You must go to the Mullion Chamber. The Mullion Chamber? You went near the Mullion Chamber? Yes, you must go there now. And in a rage, he ran to the Mullion Chamber. And when he opened the door, there was Gold Tree sitting there, alive and well. And they fell into each other's arms and hugged. And then he stopped and he looked around. And there was his betrothed, the lady he was supposed to marry now. And she looked at him and she said, Prince, it's okay. To be truth, the truth is, I was being kind of encouraged to marry you by my parents. And actually, secretly, your brother and I are in love. And at that, the prince's younger brother walked in and he said, it is true. 
we would like to remember. And of course, a big smile came across the prince's face as he gave them his blessing. And so it was, there was a wonderful marriage in the kingdom. And the prince and the golden tree and his brother and his princess, they lived happily ever after. And actually, there is an ending to this story. Because you both must be wondering, but wait a minute. Silver tree is when we find out. Let's hear it. They did live happily ever after, but there was one thing that happened. It was very short, didn't last very long, but it was a short thing that happened. Silver tree went to the well again. Trouty, trouty. And the trout came up. Who's the most beautiful in the world? Is it not I? In truth, it used to be. But now it's golden tree. Yeah, but she no longer lives. Yes, the pin was pulled from her finger. She lives alive and well. And at that, the queen raced to her boat. She raced across the sea again. Gold tree saw her coming and said to the, the prince, we must run to the mullion chamber. And, and, and the, her new sister-in-law, the other lady who was married there, she said, no, I know how to deal with this. Come down to the beach. And they all rushed down to the beach. And the prince, the queen, uh, silver tree came off the boat, and she had a she had a cup of wine in her hand, a drink. And she said, "Ah, golden tree, let us toast uh, your happiness with this wine." And she held it right up to golden tree's face, and golden tree was going to take it, but the other lady said, "No, stop. In our country where you are now, it's normal for the person offering the wine to drink first. Well, you can guess that was no normal wine, right? What should Silver Tree do? She held the cup up to her mouth like that. Mmm, mmm, lovely. But actually, in truth, she was only tilting it a little bit and the wine wasn't touching her lips. And just at that point, the other princess took her hand and just went, and banged the bottom of the cup and some of it went into Silver Tree's face and down her throat. And it was all she could do to stagger back to the boat. And make her way back across the sea to her own kingdom where she lived. She was very sick for a long time but she did live in the end. But she never again went to the trout. She never again asked that question. And as I said before, Gold Tree and her husband, the prince, the other princess and the brother, they all lived happily ever after. I hope you enjoyed that story. I'm sure you know which story is a little bit like. Hmm.